push pull legs, upper lower, full body split, a body part split, which is best for muscle growth? Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here, PhD in sports science with Wolf Coaching, and today we're breaking down what the best routine is according to science. In a good routine, we're looking for two things. First, we're looking for sufficient rest between two instances of a given muscle group being trained, such that both instances are productive for hypertrophy. Theoretically, if you don't take enough recovery time between one day for a muscle group and the next, your performance on that second day could be compromised to such an extent that the stimulus you're able to impart upon that muscle in that second session takes a meaningful hit. The second thing we look for is that we want to train a muscle group as often as is beneficial. If every time you train a muscle group, you eventually cause it to grow, surely we want to train it as often as possible to result in as much growth as possible. Let me give you an analogy with protein. We know protein contributes to muscle growth, yet we wouldn't want to have all of your protein in a single meal across the whole week and then go the rest of the week without having protein. We would want to spread that protein out somewhat across the week to see your best muscle growth. In other words, a good routine should have adequate rest between sessions for a muscle and a good training frequency. Let's touch on the first factor first. How long should you rest between sessions? Well, the truth is, how long you should rest after a session really depends on how much volume you did for that muscle group and how close to failure that volume was. Indeed, both volume and proximity to failure are going to be the two main variables impacting how long lasting fatigue is and how long it takes you to recover. For example, in a full body split, you could train the same muscle group on two days back to back if the volume and relative intensity are properly managed on that first day. So how long you should rest between sessions for the same muscle group really depends on the specifics of your routine. In that case, what does the research on frequency say? How often should we train a muscle group for hypertrophy? The most up-to-date research on frequency is the meta-analysis by Brad Schoenfeld from 2018. In including a variety of studies that measured the impact of frequency on muscle growth, here's what it found. When volume was equated for in these studies, frequency played little to no role in modifying hypertrophy. However, when volumes weren't equated for, there may have been a slight benefit in favor of higher frequencies of three or more times a week compared to once a week. Just to explain what a volume equated means here, it means that both groups, the higher frequency group and the lower frequency group, perform the same total tonnage, that's sets times reps times weight, across the week. The reason this isn't necessarily realistic is that you do fatigue within a session. And so when you do the same sets and reps, but you do everything on one day versus spread out across three days, you may get more total volume across three days, simply because the fatigue from earlier in that session doesn't impact subsequent performance as much. To summarize these findings, there were essentially no differences in hypertrophy between higher frequencies and lower frequencies, but if you look closely, you might notice very small differences potentially in favor of slightly higher frequencies of three or more times a week. With that said, the effect size from a statistical standpoint was generally trivial. The effect was also more apparent in the lower body versus the upper body. All right, so this meta-analysis suggests that frequency doesn't play a huge role, but that there may be a neutral to positive effect of slightly higher frequencies. What did previous research find? Well, there are also two in-house meta-analyses by James Krieger of Weightology and Greg knuckles of strong by science. Depending on the exact studies included, these studies either found a slight benefit of higher frequencies for hypertrophy, in the case of Greg Knuckles' meta-analysis, or no relationship between frequency and hypertrophy, in the case of James Krieger's meta-analysis. An even earlier meta-analysis by Schoenfeld and colleagues in 2016 did find that training a muscle group at least twice a week was better than once a week for hypertrophy. At the time, this meta-analysis included fewer studies compared to more recent ones. All right, to summarize that section, higher frequencies of three or potentially more times a week may be slightly beneficial, particularly for a lower body, but the effect is very small if there is one. However, if you're someone who's concerned with maximizing your hypertrophy, this may still be relevant. Higher frequencies may be beneficial in that they allow you to maintain your performance better across the week and get a greater volume in when volume is measured as sets times reps times weight. Because the muscle group you're training is relatively fresh compared to a lower frequency approach, you're able to perform better and get a higher tonnage in. And ultimately, since tonnage is somewhat reflective of tension applied to the muscle, and tension is the most well-established mechanism for hypertrophy, this makes some sense. All right, I've broken down all the science on training frequency and hypertrophy. 
But what about training splits? Which is the best routine? Well, the research on frequency tells us a few things. First, the bro split, where you train each muscle group only once a week, should very likely be avoided if your aim is maximum hypertrophy. Second, we almost certainly want to train each muscle group at least twice a week for maximum hypertrophy. Since the amount of volume performed per week and the amount of tension you impose upon your muscles does seem to matter more for muscle growth than, say, frequency, if a higher frequency allows you to perform more volume while still recovering, there may be an additional benefit to going above twice a week. This benefit is likely mostly mediated by just having a higher volume throughout the week versus a super huge benefit of having higher frequencies in and of itself. Here's a checklist for optimum frequency. You should use the frequency that you enjoy the most, is at least twice a week, and is the frequency that allows you to perform the most volume and maximize your performance in a given week while seeing your performance maintain or increase week to week. That is to say, you are still recovering. Looking at that checklist, that means a push-pull leg split only really works if you're consistently able to train six days a week. Otherwise, your frequency for certain muscle groups can fall below that two times a week threshold that is very, very likely necessary to maximize hypertrophy. Likewise, an upper-lower split only works if you can train at least four times a week, otherwise you're again falling below that effective threshold. Finally, a full body split may be the most flexible of all the approaches, in that it hits this threshold and sometimes allows you to hit more volume in a given week while still recovering, thus potentially leading to more growth. If you want to see a full video on how I set up a full body split, check out the video in this corner to see how I set up my own training using a full body approach. That's the video. While body part splits probably aren't ideal, push pull legs can work, upper or lower can work, but full body may just be the most flexible approach that may allow you to get a bit more hypertrophy. If you enjoyed the video, please comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in that next one. Peace.